Hey everyone, thanks again for uh, tuning in to Chisholm's Chair Shop again. I appreciate it so much. Um, today we're going to do a press cane chair. I'm set up. It's early in the morning, feeling good, have coffee on the table. And um, last night I was going to show you a few of my favorite tools. I forgot to do so. I wanted to show you those now. I don't have a whole lot of real old fancy things, but there there have been some unusual ones. I remember the Duquesne Grill commercial. They made the first kind of high-end grill like 20 years ago. And their advertising slogan, I've always remembered it, said, buy your first grill last. No, buy your last grill first. Buy your last grill first. Brilliant advertising. Because it was so well made, you never, I mean, they would last a lifetime. And I think they had a great warranty. But I've just bought so many things twice and uh, but these are the ones that are really proven uh, to be kind of workhorses in the shop. Let me show you real quick. I'm gonna change the angle. That orange vacuum cleaner is 36 years old. It's made by a company called Fine. It's very well known in the woodworking industry. I saved up long ago, got one, and it works so well. The hose sticks to the wall. When you vacuum with the attachment, the floor, you can feel it just pulling against the floor. You've never felt anything like it. Um, that machine has been the workhorse in my shop. It's got a cotton filter that's washable. I still have the same cotton filter, all the attachments. It's worked so well. And I have bought from college, from college on, I don't know how many upright vacuums. Had I bought this initially, I could do everything. It's a shop back and a house back. It's called Made by Fine. I strongly suggest if you need a vacuum and you can get one of those, it's worth every penny. You'll save money in the long run. This tool right here, this is a skill saw worm drive. This one's about 35 years old. Um, my employer, Dan Yeager in Telluride, Colorado, got, bought me this saw. And it's a worm drive. It's very, very heavy. But the beauty of those is when you drop cut, when you put a foot out with a piece of lumber on it and you, you, know, you cut towards the ground, it's so heavy that it just tracks, tracks your line really well. That's been my best tool ever. The curious thing about these saws, on the other side is a port that says oil here. And my good friend Nick Kyle, who was the foreman on our job site when we built Log Homes, for Dan um, said, don't worry about it. Nobody's ever oiled one. And I was like, well, why is there an oil port? But anyway, I've never oiled this one. It works like the day I bought it. And I've never heard of anybody oiling their skill saw. Very curious. But th my other favorite tools are made by Milwaukee. That's a, their whole saw. I mean, their Sawzall. And I think they might've come up with the Sawzall. I'm not sure, but you know, it's a reciprocating blade. It's like a, like a, um, what do you call it? I can't remember the name. But anyway, um, great tool. We used to have one called a hole hog, and we would drill holes into logs, and I had one spin me upside down. It got stuck in the log. It's so strong. It was such a well-made tool. Um, stand by. And then when I go to antique stores, a lot of people go look at like old planes and all kinds of things. I like the old screwdrivers because old screws are different than new screws. Um, there's different tapers and things like that. Um, I like to buy old chisels that were used by other people. This is my favorite tool that I own, hand tool. It's, and I've kind of modified them all a little bit, but this is called, this is a, a mortise clean out chisel. It's very thin. It's three eighths, my favorite width. I think it's kind of best all around. And this one had hardly been sharpened. It's so long and it's got a walnut handle. I always put athletic tape at the bottom of my hammers and chisels. I don't know. I've just gotten used to doing that. I use a lot of athletic tape. This is a, um, I found this in an antique store. It was $16. Beautiful tool. And I did some research on it. I was going to use it as a tack hammer, but it's a leathersmith's hammer. Um, so that's a curious one too. Anyway, so the chair we're going to do today is this one. Okay, sheet cane. See the groove? And um, you, saw, you can see one of my, sh the removals of um, the pressed or sheet cane in another video. 
titled that. And this had water soluble glue. Its friend, right here, let me get my angle right. Oops. Yeah, this one right here doesn't have water soluble glue. So this is going to take me half a day to clean up. And the, 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 I have another one, and it, it didn't have water soluble glue either. So we're going to take this one. Let me pause it. I'm going to put it on the bench and we'll get started. Hey, I'm over here by the chair. I've got it on my medium height bench. It's great height for the, the seat. So it's kind of right at my uh, midsection. Um, you know, we're going to put this sheet cane on. When you look at this cane, remember, if you remember the Lincoln Rocker, you know, at the, like at the back of the Lincoln Rocker, the holes are between, um, usually the holes in the back of a rocker, I've noticed, are between maybe nickel and quarter size, quarter maybe, in my opinion, a little, a little big. But this, like sheet cane, these holes are like a half inch. These are smaller than a dime, far smaller. Um, you wouldn't really want to put this like on a rocker one, you'd probably sweat. <laughs> Two, it just doesn't look as good. Rockers do need to be airy, so I'm still think, considering about what I'm going to do with the cane on that rocker on the back. I want them a hair smaller, and I think I have the solution. But anyway, um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change the camera angle to the chair, and we'll get started, and uh, we'll see if it goes well. I hope it does. I've got, uh, so anyway, I mentioned the other night that that doing these things is learning from other people, their tricks, and that being passed on. Um, and then there's your own influence. You know, you have ideas that you combine. So what I'm getting ready to do here was initially taught to me by others, and I've tweaked it kind of my own way. Some might cringe at the way I do it, but this is the way I do it, and I've been real successful at it so far. Um, but nothing's perfect. Um, but I can't wait to do it. It's so much fun. I haven't done one in about six months, so this will be very curious. I kind of kind of relearn every time, but there's one repair to the chair I need to make first, so I'm going to do that, and while it's drying, it'll dry in 15 minutes, and it's not a, a place that needs wood necessarily, and I'll show you why, okay? So we're going to tackle that. We're going to cut the cane, get it soaking, and uh, we're going to take it step by step, so I'll come and go. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm here at the chair. I'm going to try to get a good angle for you. I'm not going to have it. I wish I could have it square the whole time, but I'm going to need to really square it to myself when I do it so I can really visualize what's going on, okay? So I know there's a lot of other... This is kind of a broad overview video. Um, there's probably more detailed press cane videos. I had it looked on the web, um, but I was getting ready to do this one and wanted to... to uh, document it. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I have the groove clean on this one. The spline came out. I had minimal work to do. Um, they make a spline chisel, okay? It's got a little curved tip, and they come in different widths. I think this one's 3 16 and this chisel is great for this. So I was able to get all the debris out. You want to make sure that you don't have any humps of glue, because when you press the cane in, this groove in the chair is is a little lower you know like if you press the cane in without if you press the spline in without the cane it would it would almost disappear you always want the groove a little lower than where you're going but if you have a hump of glue that spline will be flush right along here and it'll hump and then come back so you want your groove nice and consistent and clean okay all the way around the first thing i'm going to do and the first thing i want you to see this corner right here, okay? See how gappy that is? It really should come over straight. This should come over straight, but it's kind of missing some material here, okay? That material there is going to be pressed this way, and it's not structural. I could put wood there somehow, but there's a product these days, and it's truly incredible, and it's, I think it's the least invasive fix. And what this is, this is a, it looks like a Tootsie Roll, and it comes, and a lot of you woodworkers have seen it. Mohawk, I love their products. They make a stain. They're wiping stains for wood. You can wipe 
wood with their stain, walk away and answer the telephone and come back and keep wiping it and there are no lap marks with their with their wiping stains. I don't know how it works, but I've never seen anything like it. But Mohawk products are awesome. This stuff, so what you do, you take this, you take a block of wood. What I want to do is build this corner out just a little bit so it turns, not 90 degrees, but whatever angle that is, looks like it's probably 98 degrees or 100 degrees or something like that. Okay, so I just want to build that out while I'm soaking my cane. Okay, so you just, what you do is you slice this little Tootsie Roll. It's amazing. It comes in different colors. This is a walnut. Their oak is a little light, like golden oak, like uh, that other other cane, that other chair over there is golden in color, you know. These, I realized, I thought these were Luan. These came off that rocker because of this grain. And Luan is, I think it's similar to mahogany. I thought it was some, like from Indonesia, but it's actually oak stained golden. So this is white oak. Wrong about that. Okay, so then you take this material, okay? and you, you mush it together. The beauty of this stuff is it dries as hard as steel. You can pilot a hole in it and drill into it, and it's no joke. It does truly, it is truly strong. It does not flake and chip like you think it would. The, the threads of the screws will take into it. It's really amazing. And uh, it'll be dry when we're ready to go, okay? So what I'll do now um, let me pause one second. I want to show you one other trick. I don't have I don't know how to link videos together yet So I have to pause and, and pray it all comes out. But hold the standby I'm gonna be using a couple razor blades to form this corner what I'm doing is forming a quarter corner with this epoxy Okay, so I'm gonna wax the razor blades So it doesn't pull the epoxy away when I uh, press it and send it home for its final destination, okay? And I don't know if you can see this that well, but I think you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing. I'm just building this corner up. It got, it's round. This is square, but this one's round. I want this one to come to a point too, so that, so it's a perfect turn, right? My pot, This stuff gets hard within probably four to six minutes or so. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna apply with really anything, maybe my exacto knife. I'm just gonna put a little bit right here on the corner at first, okay? And then take a look. And I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it from here of what I think looks good, because I can always trim it, okay? But it get, it'll stick to the wood so well, and it'll hide, I can hide it, and no one will know it's there, and the pressure's against the wood, so it can never fail. And it's not a you know it's not a museum piece necessarily so this is fine to to do on this chair with and it's going to be an excellent repair I don't feel like it's going to hide just fine okay so we're so so anyway I've got it flush with the top I've got an excess kind of amount on there to a degree right I've waxed it and now I'm going to take these two razor blades and I'm going to form that corner, which have been waxed, okay? So hopefully it's not going to stick to them too much. Let me form this corner back up just a little bit. I mean, it just happens so easily. That was great. It looks perfect. So that corner is going to just look better when, we, when we're finished. It's under the cane even, but why not fix it, you know? Because also... We want to fix it because it's, see, it, it's stuck a little bit. That's why I wax them. But we also fix it because uh, it's going to hold better. Okay, so that's done. And I'll take a colored marker or something and I'll rub it just with my fingers is probably enough to dirty that up enough to make, blend it right in. It'll just go away, okay? All right, so anyway, stand by. Okay, here's our next move. This edge right here, okay, when people sit in this over and over, this edge, they crank these chairs out in such mass quantity, I guess, that they weren't really thinking. And about every one you take off is sharp, 
this edge this edge back here is like a razor and that's probably where it failed I, I have the seat somewhere but um, what I like to do and what I was taught to do is you, you can take a rasp and what you want to do is just kind of round this edge over so that when we recane it right and we install the sheet cane and I'll come at it at a shallow angle and I'll go to this angle and then a shallow angle here and call it good okay it doesn't mean you don't need to be too aggressive but but you don't want it to cut right and this is just a good rasp is what they call that tool and it just removes wood pretty effectively, more than a file. A file is less aggressive than a rasp. And they do different things, but they're you know, similar in shape and nature. Okay, so that one's a bit hairy, but there. That's gonna be fine. So now, there's a little bit of a loose part, flake right there, but that'll be just fine. So now I've discolored it just a little bit. So what I do is I'll just take a marker. This is a medium dark oak and I'll just run it right on where we whitened it, right? That totally goes away. We've removed the wood, but the seat's gonna last now and nobody knows that we took anything away. I didn't do it right here. And that's the main spot. That looks perfect. Take your marker. Okay. And then a lot of times um, I'll come back with just a piece of sandpaper, just so it's smooth to the touch. You know, because the rasp is a little coarse, and that lightens it up a little bit. But I just like to smooth it out a little bit. And then you can just take your fingers, you know, just the human body, and make it look aged. You know? So... It looks great. It's ready ready for the next step. Stand by. Okay, so off we go. I've got the um, sheet or pressed cane um, laid out on the chair, and we're going to cut off a section. Okay, they sell it by the foot. It comes in widths. I think this is uh, 14 inches, and then it goes up to maybe, maybe I don't know, 17-ish maybe. Um, these are small holes, um, but this is the standard size in sheet cane. The strand cane, like this cane, that you hand do when the holes are drilled in the chair, that's how you tell. Holes drilled, this cane, okay? Holes not drilled with a dado or groove, sheet cane, okay? I've been told by my teachers that sheet cane they consider a B grade and the hand cane is an A grade so if you look closely at the sheet cane you can often see where they've broken it but inserted little pieces and if you weave them through you know in some schools that's acceptable as long as it looks okay and it's not going to fail but you can find imperfections in this in this more than when you do it yourself okay um, and from what also the other curious thing about this, they have a machine that can do them all the strands this way and this way, but no one, no human has been able to figure out how to get the diagonals in other than to do them by hand. And they have a special screw that they put through it and pull it through. So they have some tool, but they can't automate the diagonal part of this process yet. Nobody's been able to figure it out. It's pretty cool. Okay, so anyway, I went ahead and marked where I'm going to cut this. Where you cut it is about an inch further than the widest point. This tapers out, so I've cut, I've got marks, so my piece should be about an inch further out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to cut it right here. And a good pair of scissors is hard to beat. 
I read somewhere if your scissors are dull, cut sandpaper with them in different grits and it'll sharpen them to a degree. Okay, so now we've got this piece of sheet cane. Okay, what I'm going to do next, and this is drying. It's, I mean, it's already there almost. Okay, so now what we're going to do, and I've got it just wide enough. Okay, and you, I, I, as far as I know, it can go either way. Okay, but I did it this way just to save material because it, it's off the roll this way and they sell it by the foot. So it seemed to me to cut it here. Um, what I'm going to do now, just so the video doesn't get too long, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to soak it, let this dry and uh, get set up for the next, next portion of the video. All right. Thank you all so much. When I soak this cane, I've got warm water in a tub back here, okay? And what I'm going to do is put the cane in the tub and get it kind of wet. I've got a couple towels. And what I want to do, a lot of folks, when they cane, there's a product called glycerin. And I never really use it very much. I, I soak my cane in water and I go with it like that. But when I do sheet cane, I have noticed a big difference. I am sold on glycerin when I sheet cane. It makes it a little more supple and it makes me a little more accurate, okay? So I add just, a, you know, it, this doesn't have to be very deep. We're just gonna submerge this cane for a little bit. But that glycerin, I, I just, I like the way it feels comparatively when I press down on it. It just seems to wanna go in the slot a little easier and uh, it just defines the word supple I guess I don't know I like it okay so let me pause I'll be right back okay so check this out what I did I've gone ahead and made the spline for this chair okay and I've labeled each one this is the left side Okay, so they're ready, you know, once I get the cane in there, that glue that I'm using, that's the other, the other thing I love about that glue, it's very slow drying. Yellow glue, dry, it'll start grabbing within three minutes, two to three minutes. And a dowel in a chair, I mean, in one minute, you can't pull it out if you have to. It's just grabby. This glue is going to give us a longer working time, okay? So I've gone ahead and cut these, but what I want to show you is my little trick that I kind of got from inlay, where when I cut these, I can really, on the first try, usually get a, just a perfect miter, you know, and it really comes out looking clean, and it, and it makes it look like you really cared to make it really, really good, okay? But yeah, if you'll look closely, I'll change the camera angle. But uh, these miters, I was able to achieve on the first try, and I, there's, there's just a little trick to doing it. But, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And, you know, the, you want it to look handmade, right? But that's going to look great. If we can get that sheet cane in there so that the reveal of the holes stays nice and even here and here and have it taper here and here, we're, it's going to be fine. And it's all going to happen real fast. Okay, stand by. Okay, so I'm cutting this spline by eye with an X-Acto knife. Like if this is 90 degrees, you think it'd be 45. It just never lines up perfectly. What I do, I have a block of wood here. This is my sanding block. I have a bunch of these that I flatten on the table saw bed and then put spray adhesive on it and stick sandpaper to it and then cut off the excess and these sanding blocks you just know they're flat so they come in serious handy i've got them all laying everywhere all over the shop because they're cheap and easy to make so anyway but on the back of this sanding block i have two 45 degree angles right which you know will get me close right here but what i've learned is i, I like to take the spline and put it in there okay and when you determine the spline size for this, okay, 
they make it in all, it's all in the metric system, they make it in millimeters, and they make spline in all these different sizes, right? And how do you choose which size spline to use to capture the cane and go in the slot without sticking up high or sinking in too low or anything like that? And to be, uh, to get, to answer your question, you, you want to find a piece of spline I have samples with the size written on each one that I keep in my little box of uh, supplies. This one doesn't sink into the hole, right? It's just too fat. So let's go down a size. I think that's the number 9.5 I wrote on there. It's 9.5 millimeters. I'm thinking it's 8.5. Here's 8. 8 looks pretty darn good. What you want is for it to just go in and you see about a 30 second on each side or less. But if it goes in there, you're probably going to be in good shape because this is slightly malleable wood. You know, it's not ebony. It's crush, it, and you don't want to crush it, but it will conform. Okay. So to me, it's looking like number eight spline. Okay. And. I looked at that earlier, and what I went ahead and did is made those pieces here out of number eight spline, okay? And that's what these are, and I've got them all ready to go, okay? Now, here's a trick that I learned reading on someone in Austria's weaving website or something. I, it was a great trick. As we push in this cane, okay, I've developed these tools. I've kind of invented these little tools that I use. It's called press cane, not because of the cane itself, but because we are pressing it into this slot. And it's not easy to get it in there. Um, it wants to fight you and it wants to skew. It wants to turn crooked. So you start in the middles and you get that stuff in there, middle, middle, this and so forth, right? And I've developed this little tool that I use a lot. Um, this is a very stiff putty knife and I've just covered it with tape and my final piece is just a good clean piece of duct tape. And I mean, I will get on this thing and push like a mother to get that, press it in there. You're press caning, okay? Then this is a wallpaper something or another. I saw this at the Harbor Freight Tools. And I was like, you know, that'll cover a lot of room. You know, once you get it in there, when it's time to send it home, you want to send as much of it home at the same time as possible. And this really does that. So we're going to use that one and this one to try to press this cane in there and be successful, I hope. We can, I can always try again. I mean, we're not going to hurt anything, but I, I want to get it on the first try and be, have it finished. Okay, so... Let me uh, pause one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Here's the, uh, the traditional way. Okay, say once we the cane is almost ready. It's soaking still back here. It's almost ready. I'd say another three or four minutes, and it's going to be close. Um, the traditional way is to line it up, look at your reveals, and go for it in the center. And then go forward in the back, and then the side, and the side. You get four points square pressed in. And then you move towards the front and back sides and uh, hope for the best. And things start to happen that you don't anticipate. So that's why it can be frustrating. Um, but like I said, if you get set up and take your time, it's hopefully this is going to work out all right, and I don't have to do it twice for you. Um, Let's see, what I wanted to tell you next. I use, traditionally, most, cane, most people that do this, they'll, once they get the cane in, they'll lock it in with wedges and all, all these different things. And I used to do that. But then I read on uh, a gentleman in, in Europe's site that when he does it, instead of wedges, he cuts the same size spline he's gonna put in there and he holds it in with pieces of the spline and they stick up tall, okay? But it visually shows you what it's gonna look like. It holds better because those wedges are different thicknesses and they're not all the same. This is uniform 
And wait till you see how this works. I'm sold on this trick of using spline as the wedges to hold in the cane. And then when it's time to remove them, you would think they'd be hard to get out, but you take a side awl like this that has a little point going one way, and you just stick it on the side of it and just lift it. Um, and it, you know, it'll come right, once it's fixed in there, it'll just come right up. So anyway, tell you what, let's do it before the video gets too long and everyone gets too bored. So what we're going to do now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little wax on the chair. The chair is going to get wet, which is not that big of a deal, but it's, you know, I've done my finished work for the most part. I'm still going to touch it up, but I'm just going to put a little black, I love black wax on dark furniture. Put a little black wax just because we know it's going to get wet. That's all. Can't hurt. Okay, so let me go get the cane and we'll get started. A little bit of glycerin, hopefully it will help us. Yeah, it feels good. Shake off the excess. And I've got a water bottle here. If I need to wet it again, if it start, it dries out quicker than you might think. It's like a sponge, but especially if a fan is on, this stuff will dry so quick. Move these tools. Okay, so here's our sheet cane, right? Now, what we want to do is get rid of as much excess as possible, okay? So what I'll do first is I'll look at the back and I'll find the groove, okay? And I'll do this first. <clears throat> Here's the trash can. And the first thing I'm going to do is this. I don't know if you can see it. Let me change the camera angle. Yeah, all these little hairy situations on one side, I'm going to go ahead and make go away. Okay, they don't need to be there. They're not doing anything. So, and I do it over the trash can because this stuff goes everywhere. And like I said in another video, it clogs up your vacuum. So try to get as much of this junk in the trash can as you can. Then you're going to see a little piece of string. Okay, often like I was taught to remove that. There's a name for that. I'm going to get rid of one of these. Okay, so this will be our back. And we're going to put this edge about right here. Let me change the cam cam camera angle for you. We're gonna now going to put the back of this edge about an inch past the groove. So when we press down, it'll rise up and stand up, but there's plenty of material there, okay, sticking up. Okay, so that's about an inch past the groove. And then I start to look at the sides and just make sure everything where it is now, at least, until we move it even further, looks like it's going to work. I've got an inch overhang at the front, okay? Now, I start to look at the reveal through the holes of what it's going to look like, especially across the front, when I press down in the middle, okay? And when I press down, it's going to pull the whole thing forward, I would imagine. If I remember correctly, okay? So when it pulls it forward, what do I want to see and how far is it going to pull it? When I pull it forward, I'm thinking that I want this double line, maybe this double, let's do this double line. This double line here, I want to go down in the groove and then have my reveal kind of right between, right about, I want some daylight between this next double and the edge of the chair. Okay, that's what I'm going for. So once I establish where I think that might be, which is a guess at best, right? Then I'll look at the sides and do the same thing. Right now I've got, when I look at this hole, it is right in that groove. And when I look at this hole, it is right in that groove. So, if I can keep it there and there, 
we know the sides are now right because each one actually there's a little wood showing in this one and a little wood showing in this one so it right there it's perfect okay it's perfect all right so what i'm going to try to do is move this. i'm now going to try to press it in to get it started okay and i gotta find that little tool that one stand by one sec Okay, I found the tool was on the floor, but this tool is pretty wide, okay? When I put this on the cane, I don't know that it's going to go into that groove with the cane. It's pretty thick. I rewrapped another putty knife. It's not my favorite. It's much more flexible than the other, but it, I think it's going to push the cane in better until we pull out the big dog, the wide one, and really send it home, okay? So I always start in the middle, okay? We know we like where the sides were, still looks the same. The reveal at the front looks the same. So my mission now is to somehow, you know, yeah, the thinner one, push. see how it's pushing it down in there? Okay, so that's in there, it didn't cut it, it's in there, okay? But look, there's a hump here. It really wants to fight you. You gotta really think about it and take your time. So, and then it depends on which way you push. You can move the material by pushing forward, backwards. You just gotta constantly. So now, now that I have this down, okay, the edge of the cane right here is what I wanna match. See how it's a double right at the edge? I want to double all the way down here and a double all the way down the other direction, okay? So that's my mission right now, okay? And then we'll look at the back, okay? So what I can already tell, it, what, what, it, what it's wanting to do is skew on me. And I can tell that when I push down here, this double's gonna go into the groove and it's gonna curve, okay? So I'm gonna cheat it up a hair, start to push down slowly, and if it, Looks like it's about to disappear into the groove. I'll try to get material from this side to compensate, okay? And right now, we're not in, there's no glue involved. We're not in a huge hurry, you know? Um, and the other thing that I've done wrong already that I've totally forgot to do, every, life gets much easier. I don't have the trash can, so my bad. Pay the price. Life gets easier if you remove everything that you can, you know? I got ahead of myself, which is okay. It's going to be easier to keep it square. That might have been what the whole thing that was fighting me is all about. So anyway, I'll just try not to scratch or hurt the chair. I'll get rid of that. Don't need any of that. That can all go away. That can all go away. Everything's fine. That's going to be fine. That's a diagonal. Okay. Here's more cord to remove. We can pull this. It's a lot to think about. And then the corners are nice to remove. A little bit of that. It's a lot to remove back here because the chair tapers so much. So I'm going to have a significant amount of material here. And then the corner. All right significant amount of material here in the corner okay um, looks like I can remove this one no, I'm gonna leave that one okay we're back on track to it looks good so far okay let me come this way and you don't want to get these humps in there and you don't want to skew it. And you don't want to cut it either. I've got two layers of duct tape on this little putty knife. And it still feels like it's a little sharp, but it's not cutting it. That's a trick with my hand. And it's not going to go all the way in at first. It's a slow process of making the reveal right before you send it home. Okay? Because when you send it home, it's pretty cool. 
Okay, and then you put the spline things in to hold it. See, this is wanting to skew on me just a little bit. Not much though. I think it's salvageable. So I'm going to try to pull some of this front material rather than this material into the slot. Okay. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me okay? Yeah, it's difficult. But there's some really close up primers on how to do this. This is a general class. I leave this up to the professionals to really get into the detail of how to do this. Um, consistently. See, it's popping up here. Okay, now check this out. Here's where it gets cool. Okay, the front I think is acceptable. That's a nice reveal. I don't see, yeah, I like it, okay? Now, instead of taking these wedges, the traditional way, which are different thicknesses on the ends, that, that was my problem. I always was frustrated using these. This spline, I cut into little pieces. I always order extra, and I will use it to fasten, right, what we just did so we can pull tension against it properly, okay? So I'll take that, and then I have a little silver hammer. Where is it? I got another one close by, but my favorite hammer is this. This is another antique hammer. It's got some punch to it. But anyway, I'll take the spline and tap it and not set it all the way. There's no glue in it, but just hold it. See how square it looks? Look at our nice reveal right there. Can you see that? I think it's going to come out. Okay. So, then, the further out we go, pushing this down, making sure there are no bubbles. What a great reveal. We got real lucky. Okay. Let's get another one in there. Because what happens is the cane starts to develop a memory. Right? And uh, it's going to like where it is. Okay, this one, yeah, I just don't want to pull too much from the front, but it is a heck of a reveal. Okay? So I just love the spline method. Had I used those wedges, if they weren't all the same thickness at the end, I'd just be putting them up, putting them down, trying to find the right one, you know? Okay. Let's pray that it keeps continues to work. Now it looks like I've got so much room at the back that I can at least remove it to here. Okay? Here it goes. I hope I didn't take too much. But I think it's going to be just right. And like I said, I should have should have done that from the get go, right? Yeah, it's gonna be fine. But things happen, and we gotta fix them. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this back. I've got these across the front, so I'm not pulling just from the front. I'm pulling from the sides everywhere, get it nice and flat, right? And now I want to get the center into this groove, right? And instead of pressing straight down or towards myself, I'm going to gently push away from me to make it even tauter. But you can pull it out of whack, so you got to just got to be a you got to walk the line. Okay, so I'm going to push away from myself just a little bit. And I want that thing to get down in there. Okay, so it doesn't want to ever go at first. That's why they press, press cane the press cane, because it takes some pressing to get it in there. And I don't want to cut it with the sharp, sharper uh, blade. Okay, even that reveal is looking nice. Then you can start to begin to remove some of these diagonals. I, I usually wait on these because you can get carried away. I did one where I had to replace the cane 
before I even started because I removed too much stuff. But it makes a huge difference, so it's necessary. But it's not the end of the world. There's no glue involved yet, right? It's just a piece, yeah. That's not a piece of the can coming apart. It was just a floater. And then I cut it. Okay, that's pressing in. Now it's starting to really go in. Okay, so what you want to do is watch out at the corners that you don't cut anything because remember you got to get those corners in next from the other direction. Okay. Push to this side. At the back, I can see about a 30 second. It's going to be great. Just, I mean, just daylight right there. Maybe not even. I don't know. We'll see. Y'all still see? Okay, I'll try to turn the chair now that the scary part's over with. Or the initial scary part. Okay, so now I'll put another spline in. With my little silver hammer, wherever it is, but I don't see it. There it is. Okay. And you don't drive it home, but you get close, right? Pretend them. They give you a good visual. It's, I love this tree. And then you put one next to it, and then one next to it. Not too close to the corner, because you still need to work that corner. I have a tiny little piece of wood here um, that I'll use. That I've softened the ends on this piece of wood, and I'll use this to get my corners. Okay, because the putty knife is too big. For me in a lot of these instances okay because it might hit the spline the spline I'll leave far enough to get that little piece of wood in there to adjust the corner okay so I like the front I like the back and remember this is going to shrink cane will shrink to a degree but you still want to get it as tight as possible without pulling the pattern apart okay so now side action how much can we remove at least these two, right? And then we'll start. So, holding a hand here gently, find my groove right here. It's at an angle, comparatively. We'll start to just gently coax it in. Just coax it in away from the other side, sort of. And it takes it before it really bites. You just got to get its memory going. And then eventually it'll drive it home. Got a lot of excess material. I haven't done this in so long. That's not doing anything. Except making it harder. Right? Okay, let's push it down. Everything still looks good. Still don't have right there. Maybe. We'll start right there. Right there. Okay, got that in. Now it's buddy. Now it's buddy. And now it's buddy. Send it home. Send it home. Send it home. Pull out the wedges. Okay. Let's put one right in the middle. Just like it's going to be when we're done. That's got that. Now, before we go to the sides, let's let's go to the other side. I think that's the sequence. So now we're gonna go to this side. And once again, I've got excess material. And now we pray it just keeps working for us. So I'm 
I'm going away from the other guy just a little bit, right? Just to kind of start getting established. Kind of can't see the breach on that. Canoe seats are hard because they're so small, it's hard to get them tight without pulling the pattern out. And then they get wet when you go canoeing and they sag even more. I think webbing's better for a canoe seat. Then came, to be honest, it looks cool, but. Doesn't like the moisture so much. Before I get too carried away with the ends, I want to focus on this middle, right? I think so. Now it's going home. No cutting. No cutting. No cutting. No cutting. No cutting. It's, it's going to be awesome. Nothing else happens. So we'll take another piece of spline directly across from its buddy. Take our trusty little ball and peen hammer. Put in another piece of spline and then we'll continue on. What I'm going to do, let me press it in before we run out of tape and everybody goes away. Hold on, stand by. I'm gonna press some more in and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm putting, I've pressed in all the cane and I'm putting the last little piece of spline in, okay? So check it out. We're in no more jeopardy. There's no glue involved. The Look at these holes. They just disappear into the ether about right here. These holes disappear into the ether about right here. It really came out well. And then if you look closely at this front reveal, look, you see wood here, all but no daylight, and then daylight. So the seam is right behind it. And then even at the edge where the, um, where the spline will be, you can just see partial of that. It's, it, I'm real happy with it. So it's going to be great. And it's going to be tight too once it dries. Okay. So the hard part's over. We're there. I believe. But, so now what we do is we take our spline, we install the spline, okay? And what I'm going to do, what I'm going to try to do this time, I've been thinking about how I used to do it. And um, what I'm going to do is put the spline in, and before I set it all the way down, I'm going to take the X-Acto knife and cut the cane against the spline so that when I push the spline the rest of the way down, the cane coming up the sides disappears into the trough, but just by a little bit. Because you want it to be U-shaped underneath. You don't want it just drooped in there because it could fail. You want it to go under the spline and up the other side as far as you can, just out of sight. Okay. Some people drive it all the way home and then cut it, but I, I think it looks a little cleaner to... Uh, do it the other way. So um, then, um, in risk of this tape getting too long, when I take these out, all you do is, is do this. You just put it in the end and just flick it out. And there's no wedges and you know it's the right size every time. I've fiddled with those wedges forever. I love this. And you can even use the next size up spline and it'll still hold. And you don't have to drive it in as far, okay? So, what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and just finish it. Okay, here we go. Here's our, if you get this too wet, it'll swell. I don't even wet it. It's ready. Okay, so what I do now, I'm going to cut off any little exteriors. I'll see if I can get this done for you. And don't take a break. I want all this garbage out of there as best I can. I'll clean it up real total. Before we do another one. You 
just make sure it's all gone so it doesn't get in your groove or do anything weird. And you always want to check your groove. There's often floaters in there and weird, yeah, I see one right there. There's a piece that blew in there. There it goes. Okay, now my little stick. Where is that little stick? There's a wedge. Okay, this. Now, before we do anything, form your corners up. Okay? Get those nice without cutting anything. You want to keep that pattern keep that pattern really going without making it look skewed or bent or missing something. You know, you can hear it cutting something down in there. You gotta be real careful. Right here. Now this piece is flying, it's too close. I can't get the tool in there, so I need that little orange situation. All side all maybe they call it. Pull it out, move it back. Okay. Now I can form this corner a little better. I want that cane all the way at the bottom. But we're going to send it to the bottom if it's not. With force. If necessary. Okay, let me come over to this corner. I've got the same issue here. I need to pull this out. Move it over just a hair. This corner. Okay, and then this last corner. It's down there I'm pretty darn good on both sides. Okay, so now we're gonna pull out the craft glue and we'll get started. Go around, and as I go, I'm going to pull the spline out and send her even deeper, one at a time, okay? I like this little tool. You can put her on the doubles, and you have less of a risk of, uh, there's another floating piece of debris right there. You can do it on the doubles, and you risk you lessen the risk of uh, ripping anything. So far, there are no rips in it. It's perfect. It's just right. Okay, so here, send her in. Here, another piece of debris. Here, here, here. Remember that piece of filler, it's just nothing but a corner with tension on it now. It does, it's irrelevant. And it's brown. We'll pull this one up. We're seeing it getting deep. Pull that one out. This again. That just really sends it in there, doesn't it? Yeah. Significantly different. Okay. Now we'll go over with ourselves with this one. And then I can go back and work on the finish some more and liven this chair back up.
Okay, let me finish. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got everything pressed in. And it looks really good, I think. This is going to be great. And the I haven't seen any breaks in the cane or anything that I don't like. So anyway, now we're going to take now it's time to do it. Let's get it let's get it finished. Move on to the next project. Okay, so one thing you notice is it trashes your area. But anyway, I'm going to put this craft glue in, okay? And um, last night I put a, some on a piece of paper just to make sure it still is viable. You know, it's not real old, but it's still good to check these things. And you can be pretty darn liberal with the glue because especially this you can wipe up with, we're going to wipe it up with water. And you go around it once and then you realize you got to add even more glue, usually if I remember correctly. And sometimes holding it up high, you can angle it better. About to miss. But it looks good. Yeah, it starts disappearing. Pretty good, which is a good thing. But craft glue will remind you of high school. You've smelled it before. It's not as familiar as Play-Doh, but it's close. And he would use craft glue when he was applying felt to a secretary's desktop or high glue. I think it can stand just a thin bead more, like a piece of angel hair pasta more all the way around it. Because you want some squeeze out. Just that way you know that. And ideally, when you, if I was doing something different, if you put glue on the other piece, it does help. It's called sizing it. And it grabs better, you know, when it meets the other glue. Shake hands a little better. Okay. I don't want to get too carried away. But this is going to look cool. Okay, so this piece says, this is the left. Let's do the top and the bottom first. Here's the top. And before we send it home, I'm going to try to trim it, right? too much. Yeah, it's going in. Good. Okay, so where's my little hammer again? Right here. Okay, and what I want to do is make sure I'm not over the edge and I'm going to break off a tip. I want it just right. So I'm going to push this one in and push it over. And then I'm going to get rid of this debris. And then I am going to just hit the middle for now. And if you worry about it, you can take a block of wood. This is my designated block. Remember, I don't want to go all the way down yet because I'm going to trim it before I send it. Okay, and then I'll put the block here. block here. Set back. Okay, this is the left. This is the bottom. Now I'm going to go around the corner. This is number two. Let's go around the corner and see what happens. I think we'll have better adjustability if we need it. Can you see? Okay. Okay, 
so I got that there. should come together when we send it okay now how would I miss it on the other ones okay so this is the bottom Put in the final piece. Put in the cover. And I hope I don't have to trim it too much. If at all. Might have to just a hair, it looks like. Yeah. Okay, so. It's in everywhere, right? Because if it's not making all the corners, you know, once it makes all the corners, it should get shorter and go right in. Let's see if that was the case. What it looks like to me is the back heel needs to just be sanded slightly. Okay? So I have... I have... Jesus... I'm going to go just like this. I'm going to lift it back out. And that heel, this right there, that heel, see the back towards, away from me? That's holding it up, not the front tip. Okay, and you can bevel it under, backwards, so that the bottom is shorter than the top, because it's not like inlay. It's not going to be sanded down. It's going to be pressed down and be tight. Okay, so let me put this back in. always cut it if you have to really remove some material but I think it might just go I might have to monkey with it just a little bit more or is it going to be perfect come on I think it's safer yeah I'm going to cut the heel rather than uh, just a little bit, rather than sand it just to be done with it. It cuts real easy. And I'm going to add one more, just a little micro bead. That'll be three times across. That should do it. But it does disappear pretty good. See this one's risen up a little bit. Put it back. And hope for the best. Get all the curves and the shortness.
Okay, so now I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and I'm going to go around and cut this material off against the spline and then we're going to drive it home. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going around. The spline is still slightly raised and I'm just, it's harder than you think to get rid of. I mean, it's pretty tough stuff. You could probably hang by three strands of it for a little while if you wove them together. You could climb up it like a rope probably. Okay. So I just need to uh, go away again for a second. I gotta start the camera off and on every now and again or I might lose the video. I'll be right back. Okay, just a little bit more. I'll be right back. Stand by. All right, now I just got to do the back. And then it'll be the mo moment of truth. We'll see what we get. Stand by. Okay, so it's shaping up. I just want to clean up as much little fuss as I can off this thing. And then we're going to take those blocks, those wide blocks, and we're going to just mush it in there. Press it in, right? And it'll be finished. Just like that. So it goes quick, but the preparation is the killer. It's a, I, I mark off a day on my calendar to do one correctly, usually. Or if I have them lined up, I can do two or three, but it just depends. That all looks good. That's going to disappear. That one's going to disappear. And there'll be, we're, we'll find something that needs a little trimming at the end of that. Because if you don't get it right at the surface, it's still proud. You know, you got to cut it right at the edge. But I like this method a little better than, than cutting it at the end because I just feel like you see it just a hair more. But I think most people do it the other way. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. And the beauty of it is, is if we were using yellow glue now, might have a hard time pressing that in already. It dries that fast. It is such powerful stuff. People don't realize how strong carpenter's glue is. And it's a, it's a type of, he called it, Gary Barnhart told me it was something plastic resin. It's a, it literally dries into a type of plastic almost. But it, but it has these little, it spreads out like daggers more than you think in the wood. And, uh, you know, when I fix the break on that Lincoln rocker, we're going to use all the glue, you know, because we don't want it to ever fail at the joint there. That's, we want it to become one with the wood, and if it fails, it'll just fail somewhere completely different and unrelated. Um, That'll be a good yellow glue joint repair. That'll be a fun one. And hopefully it'll work out as well as this one seems to be. Okay. I can clean up with a you know a little towel or something later, but I like the way it looks. I'm real happy. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take, let's take Micro Man first. This one. Okay, and then I'll find my trusty little hammer that I can never find, and if I can't, I'll use this one. Here it is. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do Big Dog in the middle. Still a little debris right there. Anything higher than the wood on the seat will still show. But it's okay. You can, you can doctor it but I like to get rid of most of it. But it gets to the point of diminishing returns at some point. Okay. Yeah, I feel good glueiness. It's nice and sticky. 
That looks just great. The edge isn't too mucked up. That could show just a little bit. Put it into the chair. Okay, let's send it home. Be done. Thank y'all so much for watching. The next episode will be the Lincoln Rocker. We're going to make that repair. And then we're going to glue the leg on this secretary. We're going to dowel it on. I've got it ready to go almost. I want to get that thing standing up and get it repaired and get it to the client. It's been very patient. I did a chair for him. And this is another family piece of there. The secretary is. So I, I don't totally send it home at first. I just see what's going on. But as far as pressure and everything, spine feels like we, we made the right decision with it. Okay. send it home here in a second. I'm just getting it ready. Make sure I don't have to trim too much more before I make it disappear or become flush with the top. You don't want to get in here because there's a little lip. You want to keep your block out here so as not to uh, Make it too low. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now we're going to send it home. And you can literally just walk away. It's a sticky, I mean, it's so sticky, it's not coming out. I mean, oops, don't want to do that. It hurt me, man. Okay, I like it. Here we go. Where's the big dog? All right, we're going to start at the corner. Put it on the back brown wood. That sounded like it. That sounded like it. That sounded like it. Getting some squeeze out, which is good. Perfect. Now I just want to fine tune it. And what I might do is in about 30 minutes after the after we end the session, I'm gonna um, probably come back down 
and make sure it hadn't squirted it upwards like a pumpkin seed would out of your fingers, you know, with this glue being a slow gl drying glue. I'm going to kind of check it, right? Make sure that everything's going to be okay. But once I clean it up a little more and once it dries and gets even tauter, um, I think we're going to be in good shape. So anyway, I'll see y'all when uh, we post this Lincoln Rocker. Stand by. Yeah, so the next, next mission, uh, Lincoln Rocker repair on the side. Glue the leg back on the secretary with a dowel. It's best with two people. We're going to try it alone. And then we're going to start applying the gussets, the rush on those two very old chairs. And I think they're, I know they're Southern chairs. And, um, and then we're going on a field trip on the next sunny day to Lake Summit. My buddy has a chair unlike anything I've ever, ever seen. Don't know what it is and need y'all's help. So anyway, hope everybody's doing well. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks again for tuning in to uh, Chisholm's Chair Shop. All right, see you later. Bye.